Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. So tonight we are actually being joined by Ann Marks with the California Citizens Redistricted Commission. And Je uh, Ann is actually joining us, uh, uh, the, the commission staff, as the outreach manager following a 12-year career uh, in access to justice with a focus on improving disability and language access with the California Judicial Council's Court Interpreters Program. Um, she was the program lead on the promotion of court interpreting as a profession and uh, American Sign Language interpreting issues. Um, she's the co-author of two nationally recognized publications on the use of hearing and deaf interpreters for ASL interpreted court events. Um, and Anne is also a member of the California Bar with experience in business, government, technology, law, marketing, and public relations. Uh, she is a Fulbright Scholar and a graduate of Scripps Women's College, um, as well as UC Hastings College of Law. So previously, Anne owned and operated two fitness businesses for more than uh, 40 years, where community-based outreach was core to success. Uh, she's also a longtime member of the Green Restaurant Association Board of Directors and has held uh, community leadership roles with Boy Scouts of America and North Oakland, uh, South Oakland Little League. Uh, long before any of that, Anne actually grew up in San Diego, uh, and she loves swimming, spending time in fresh air, playing at family camp, throwing pots, and communicating in different languages, including Spanish and Hebrew. So uh, please join me in welcoming Anne, um, and Anne, I'll pass it over to you. Great. Thank you, and um, thank you to everybody who has joined, and um, we're really glad that the Citizens Redistricting Commission was invited to come tonight and that you have made time to hear about the redistricting process. So in this presentation, we'll be going over who the commission is, background on redistricting in California, and how to participate in the process. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a small group right now. We might pick up a few more people. So I'm fine if you do have questions as we go, uh, I will be able to try and answer them. And, and when I bring up the presentation in a minute, uh, you'll see, hear more about the kinds of questions that I can't answer, but I'm, I'm fine if you, you want to bring up anything and don't worry if you've got a pet in the background or a child or background noise, we're all most likely at home just trying to figure out how to get this kind of thing moving in the, the pandemic and um, no problem if there's a little noise, we'd rather have your questions and be able to answer them. So, um, all right, let me go ahead and share my screen and I will bring up the PowerPoint presentation as well. Hold on one second. Daisy, of course, offered to, um, to run the the Zoom for me and I said, oh no, I'll do it. And so that means that I'll have all kinds of exciting technical challenges tonight, but we'll, we'll get through them together. All right. Okay, so um, let's see, you should be able to see uh, just the slide right now. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, there is a government code that determines what we can talk about outside of a regularly scheduled commission meeting or an official public input meeting. So tonight I can't take questions. Um, I can't have you provide input or go into in depth about input on a specific area, but you're welcome to do that at any point on our website or in any of the other ways that we'll be going over today. And for clarification, we can discuss any questions that you have regarding the state redistricting process and how you can participate by providing your input. We just can't discuss the actual district boundaries or your specific input. So one of the greatest powers that the people of California have is to elect their own representatives in government to represent their needs. And how districts are drawn can make the difference between empowering and maximizing the voters, voters' voices or minimizing and muting those voices. So in most other states, it's the politicians who draw the lines. 
but California's Citizens Redistricting Commission was formed to take back the power and have the people redraw the maps for Congress, State Senate, State Assembly, and Board of Equalization. The commission is made up of 14 citizens who went through a very rigorous selection process. And by fully participating and monitoring this upcoming and ongoing redistricting process, more communities may have the opportunity to elect candidates of their choice. And when you speak up about your community, it's critical to helping keep your community whole as much as possible. And this ensures that your voice is heard by your elected leaders when they're making decisions about the quality and funding of children's education, about addressing transportation concerns, determining tax rates, and other things that affect any particular community. So your input is valuable in shaping these new political boundaries. So um, we thought that it would be beneficial to try to break down exactly how redistricting can affect you and the, the people who are um, joining us tonight. One of them is that, that, as I mentioned, this power was transferred over in 2008 California voters passed Proposition 11, and that was the voters first act, which authorized the creation of this independent commission to draw the new district lines. That was for state Senate, state assembly, board of equalization. Then in 2010, there was another proposition, Proposition 20, which was the voters first act for Congress. And that added the responsibility of drawing congressional districts to the commission. So it was a historic process and it transferred the power of drawing those, those district maps away from the politicians and gave it to the people. And so having the opportunity to elect representatives that champion your issues is really important in a state like California where people's interests can be drastically different even from street to street. So in Northern California, we might have people champion um, environmental or economic issues. While in Central California, it might be more of a focus on water and agricultural issues. And then in Southern California, people might be more interested in issues dealing with transportation or housing or employment issues. So one of the big um, issues here is around funding priorities. And this is tied to the election of representatives or when you elect representatives, that are particularly attuned to your issues, you might want to elect representatives that have your financial interest at heart. And when the time comes to build a budget that will, that will be, affect your community, you wanna make sure that you've got a representative who's really fighting to get the financial resources that your community deserves for various services, such as education or water, fire protection, and um, other kinds of things. So the community boundaries um, in the redistricting process is it's all about drawing lines and determining which communities get grouped together and then which communities are going to be grouped into districts. So your input in this process is essential to help commissioners understand where your community starts and where it ends. In redistricting, California is one of the very few civic activities that any Californian can provide input into. Doesn't matter if they have citizenship or not, or if they've um, been living here a long time or not, anybody who's in California can provide input. And that can ultimately impact the law and regulations, the tax structure, how funding is distributed and which services are provided. So to that point, and for this presentation, we have been sending out paper, um, a, a paper form that incarcerated people around California can use to provide input as well. And so again, all Californians are welcome to participate in this. All right, so um, there are different redistricting efforts going on. We, the, the commission is one of many efforts that are happening right now in California. And we are redrawing the districts that I mentioned for the, for the state offices and for the federal districts. But right now, other groups are doing counties, cities, school districts, water districts, community college districts. 
So it can be confusing to have these different efforts happening simultaneously. Aside from being involved in the state redistricting, we certainly encourage you to participate in these local issues, but we, and the local redistricting efforts, but we are focused on the statewide redistricting effort. All right, so when the commission is making their determinations, they have to follow six criteria. And the criteria are in order. They have to follow them in order. So the first one is about equal population. And this is a requirement that comes from the US Constitution. And they take those pop the population from the census. So the census data just came out a little bit late this year. And that is, um, oops, sorry. That drives the population count. The districts must also comply with the Voting Rights Act. And that's to ensure that minorities have a fair opportunity to elect representatives of their choice. The districts also must be drawn contiguously. So all parts of the district have to be connected. And there's supposed to be very limited division of cities or counties in communities of interest. And we'll talk more about communities of interest in a minute and, and what that means. So um, the, the next one is that they have to be geographically compact. This gets a little technical. The um, nearby areas of population are not, cannot be bypassed for more distant populations. So it talks about the density of the district, not about the shape when they talk about it being compact. And then the, the last one is one that you might not have heard of. I had not heard of this nesting issue before I started working here. And wherever practicable, there has to be, each Senate district is supposed to be made up of two complete and adjacent assembly districts. And then the Board of Equalization districts have to be comprised of 10 complete adjacent state Senate districts. So the commissioners are having to balance all of these six th things the whole time in order of priority. And it's a lot that's very technical. The other piece is that uh, the in place of, um, it, sorry, in addition, people cannot talk about the residents or uh, the particular candidate or an incumbent candidate because um, th that's, you can't draw a district for the purpose of trying to make somebody be reelected. And, and so sometimes when people are giving input, they might say, oh, I want to continue to be in a district with so-and-so politician. And that is input that the commissioners cannot actually consider. They have to think about the um, geography and the Voting Rights Act and all of those pieces. Right. Okay, so here we go with the communities of interest. And, um, and when, we're, when the commission is drawing maps, they have to be mindful of this. It's really easy for staff and the commission to get the population numbers, to, to look at the geography and the compactness, but the community of interest input is the one thing the commission must get from Californians. They cannot collect that information unless you all are providing your input. And the way that, and sometimes we say COI, we, for communities of interest, we'll talk about it as COI. So the way that COI are defined is as a concentrated population, which shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for the purposes of fair and effective representation. And you have to keep in mind that a COI is not the same as a district and a district is not the same as a community of interest, but communities of interest are very important key building blocks of the districts as they get designed. Some of the ways that people talk about their community to describe it would be geographic, like there's a river or maybe where there's a mountain range. The other would be boundaries about a particular city line or a county line or maybe a school district. But it also could be things that people have in common, like um, we shop in these same areas. These are the, the shopping centers we go to or these are the parks that we go to if there's a, a regional park system. Uh, it could be uh, an area that has those kinds of things affected. Uh, 
All right, so we're going to get more into ways to provide different kinds of input now. And we'll take a look at um, the, the website that outlines these three different online ways. And um, this input, all the input, whatever kind you might decide to give is vital to the success of the commission. The commission has started the line drawing process now. It's before they were just taking um, community of interest input, but now they're actually also taking input on specific lines. And uh, this drawmycalifornia.org is the one-stop shop where you can access redistricting tools to share your input. So we'll go ahead and click over to that. And give me one second here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take down, make sure, let's make sure that um, once I get there, it's showing again. And hold on a second. Okay, so um, this is actually, I'll go to our participate page. All right, and are you able to see this page right now? We see the koi on your on the screen right now. Uh, you see, so you're still seeing that. So I'm not sure why when I switch over, it's um, it doesn't switch with me. So give me one sec. I'll just stop it and come back up. Okay, all right. So this is um, this is actually full redistricting software. Um, this is one that's really technical. We won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, and right now you're seeing me go through the uh, different web pages, yes? Daisy, can you see the drama CA district? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay, so we've got, we've got um, well, this is our web page. We draw the line ca.org. And when you're here, you can go into the home page and you can go to participate and then there's all the different ways we're gonna be talking about actually are shown here. And I'll take you over to these other websites. I know that Daisy put in the chat that she'll pass out the um, PDF of the slides and then all of the links are also live there. So that's a way that you can find any of this as well. Um, when you go on to Draw My Community, this is a place that you could go to provide community of interest input and it's available in Spanish or English. As soon as we went, the tech support popped up. If you need any help, you could skip the tutorial. Um, we have the opportunity to either go as a guest or to log in. If we do log in, then you can save your work and you can look at it later or, or follow up on it. But if not, you would continue as a guest. A map will come up and here you're able to just start answering questions, just typing. And then at the end, you also can draw, um, you can use the map as well. The other way um, is more technical. It looks similar at the beginning, but it's a way that you can actually draw a district if you want to propose a very specific district. So you would come in, it, it looks very much the same at the beginning, but then um, when you get here, you have to give a plan name, you select a district type, and there are different layers it's shown over here. And I'll just choose uh, California State Assembly and start with a blank map. And so then with this, if I choose a layer, I can add, for example, the congressional and state district and it should pop up. I can draw and I can choose how I want to draw in this area. And those green lines were the congressional districts popping up and then it's highlighting. So it works with you. But the best part about that is that um, you can actually um, get help. Like I showed you right at the beginning. Uh oh, here we go. Right at the beginning, it did um, pop over to the technical support. So you get, there's lots of ways to get help, and we're going to talk more about that. Let me just talk a little bit more about um, that, those different tools that I was just highlighting. And I'm going to share my screen again, and we'll go back into the presentation. Are there, actually, before I go over, are there any questions right now? 
And hi, I see we got another couple of people coming in. So thank you for joining us and we'll um, keep going. And if you do have questions as we go, I'll answer the ones that I'm able to. All right. Okay, so with the Draw My California Community Org, that's where you can tell the story of the community all of those things we were talking about with Koi, what brings people together? What's important to your community? Are there nearby areas that you want to be in a district with or areas that you don't want in your district and why? Uh, you also can talk about the different examples around organizing around a school, wildfire prevention, different economic issues in your area, public health concerns, transportation needs, whatever it is that impacts your life. And your shared interests could describe what your community is focused on right now. So it might be connected also to a future goal, such as bringing accessible public transportation or getting those public health updates in a language that is spoken in your community instead of only English, whatever it is that, um, that would be bringing more opportunity into your area and connects you and brings you together. So once you've described that koi, then you do have that opportunity to zoom in and to draw a map if you'd like to do that. And um, there are, I did mention, um, I think we saw the option for a tutorial at the beginning. That tutorial is available in 14 languages, of uh, 14 of California's most used languages plus Spanish. So actually um, 16, including English and Spanish. And we do recommend that you create the account so that you can save the work and revisit it, even though you're able to do it the other way. So the second tool was the um, Draw My CA Districts. And we talked about that. It is, um, it, it, it is a little bit more technical for those who want to draw the desired borders of the actual districts. And one of the things about that is that um, if you remember the six criteria we talked about, if you do draw one of the districts, you can check a box where you check the compliance of your district. Does it have the right population? Does it have the right um, compactness or density? And um, if not, you'll see what you need to do. You can then pull your map over a little bit and you will all of a sudden be able to see that you're now compliant. All right, so there's lots of ways to get assistance. And um, this is done through that chat tutorial that we saw. It also can be done through the, um, the user guides, which are available, and you can click on through the PDFs that you'll get later. Or if you are thinking about doing the Draw My CA Districts, I highly encourage you to watch this how-to video. I, um, I checked it out yesterday. It's about nine minutes long and it really helps to make using that easier. They, they're, they're moving through the whole way and it makes it much easier. If you want to, you can have a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment where you will schedule with somebody who will be talking to you live uh, virtually from just like we're doing tonight and they can help you figure out how to do this. Or you can, um, you can just do that. Oh, and the videos are in Spanish as well. And if not, you can even just call the helpline directly. So you can call the 510-280-3305 number and you'll be able to get help over the phone if that's more comfortable for you. So the help is really well staffed uh, for this point in the process, which is great. We also have in-person assistance. So we have redistricting access centers. Those are run by statewide database and they're located in Fresno, Long Beach, Oakland, Sacramento, San Bernardino and San Diego. And you have to make an appointment because of the pandemic situation, but they're very easy to make and they're very easy to go in and then you can get help. And there's staff at each location and um, you can get access to the redistricting software, to publicly available computers, and everything is ADA accessible if, um, if you need any help with that accessibility. All right, so uh, we've, we've shown some of these online ways to provide input, but there are, even a, there are other additional ways. 
And outside of sharing online with the online districting tools, you can share your input by um, reviewing. Well, actually, it's the commission is meeting every week now. There, there's actually meeting. I think there's a meeting going on right now still. I don't think they've finished it tonight. So each week they're reviewing geographic areas and they're considering a potential district ideas. And so they're utilizing all of the communities of interest testimony that's already come in and that they've received throughout the summer. And then they're assessing how that testimony might be able to inform district boundaries. And then they consider uh, each of those, they're doing compliance checks and making changes. And this eventually will help them to make the, the maps that, that will become draft maps and eventually final maps. So the commission right now is welcoming input as they visualize these potential community groupings. And one of the, the, the most exciting ways and the most effective ways to submit criteria is through these community feedback forms. And if you do go to our website, it's really easy. It's, you're just putting in the area um, that's on the map you're talking about, and then you just write in what your comment is and the county that you're around, that you're in, and you press submit, super easy. And these forms are available on our website. Um, I'll, I'll try it to see if it goes over more easily than it did. Are you, is it following over to this right now? Uh, you mean like the, the link? Do you see com community feedback on visualizations right now? Uh, I'm looking at the additional ways to provide input slide. Okay. I don't know why. I feel like like Zoom changed their screen sharing thing. So let me just, I'm going to show this to you because it um, is worth everybody seeing. When you click on the link, you will get to this page, which now you're here. Um, you can see community feedback on visualizations. Yes. Okay. So you just come in, you're putting in just three points, very friendly and easy to use, selecting your county and then submit. And so um, the commissioners are really excited about having input in that way. And let's see if I can, um, now am I back on the PowerPoint or still not? No, not, you're I still on the Airtable form. I never, oh, oh, let's see, I'm following the notes. No, nope, new share, here we go. Okay. So I'm um, back here to additional ways. Is it back on the additional ways page? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, so I um, highly encourage people to use that the community feedback on visualization tools as that gets the commissioners right now live. Uh, the biggest thing we need is to help spread the word and so when you go to We Draw the Lines California or We Draw the Lines CA.org, you can find out all kinds of information about upcoming meetings. You can find out how to join our social media uh, toolkit weekly mailings so that you can put this out on Instagram or on, um, on LinkedIn or on Twitter or whatever you would like to use. And you also can watch um, our different videos. You could get together with other loved ones and watch the videos together and then all of you put your input in together so that you don't feel like you're trying to do it alone. And particularly with this group um, of tonight who's joining, one of the other ways to spread the word is also if you are in communication with your loved one, if they are incarcerated right now, and this is important to you that they be able to provide input as well, you can remind them that they're going to be getting that paper form that I mentioned earlier and uh, that they would be able to fill it out and turn it back into their mailroom. And they'll be coming into the mailrooms for most of, at, at most of the facilities. So uh, very important to, to spread the word in all of the ways that you can. You might want to take this back to a church network or back to a school parent teacher association and even a presentation like this can be provided to one of those groups or it can all, and it can also be provided in Spanish as well as English if that's helpful for a particular uh, community. So this is our timeline. We've been um, 
we had been doing other educational presentations and more communities of interest. Now the commission in October is focused on line drawing. And like I mentioned today and tomorrow and the next day, the commission's holding this three-day meeting that's allowing the public to present district maps to the commission. So some organizations around the state have participated in that and submitted maps and are, are providing their information, their suggestions to the commission. And that will, what that's leading up to is that the commission must post draft maps no later than November 15th. The current plan is for them to provide these draft maps to the public on, the, on November 10th. And once they do that, um, there will then be public input responding to the draft maps. And for 14 days, there will be public input and um, no new maps will go out by the commission. The final maps the, the commission's going to submit to the Secretary of State has to happen no later than December 27th. So the commission will also be scheduling input, like I mentioned, in the days after the draft maps are posted. And then there's a short period as well once they, um, as they go through that process. So the public is encouraged to keep providing feedback throughout this process. And it doesn't matter if you use the voters first act at crc.ca.gov email, it doesn't matter if you use the visualization feedback form or the various tools that I went over today or the upcoming meeting, um, I mean, or to go at an upcoming meeting and actually get on um, and talk at one of those virtual meetings. So whatever um, you would like to do, just the important thing is to give that feedback. So again, can't take your public input tonight, but I will be able to answer questions about process and about how to give input. And I'll just leave up here our phone number, 916-323-0323. Um, and then you can also get my email address here, anne.marx at crc.ca.gov. Uh, again, welcome to have other groups request a session like this. And I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and see if we do have any other questions. Thank you so much, Anne, uh, for that presentation. Um, if folks have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or raise your hand. Um, I know I had a question just while folks are, you know, if they're, if they're still kind of thinking of them. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that folks who are incarcerated are also able to be part of this process. So I don't know if you're able to share a little bit of what that's looking like and if it's everybody who's incarcerated in California that, and that's in County Jails and State Prisons or only folks who are at certain institutions. So if you could share a little bit more about what that would look like, um, that would be great. Sure. So um, this week, the forms are being mailed out and there were about um, 109,000 forms were being mailed out altogether. And I, or they, in different packages. So the every single person in the statewide facilities, the adult population, will be receiving one through the mailroom in their mailbox. So they uh, they're getting two pieces of paper. One piece is a um, it's like a an instruction sheet and kind of an overall um, explanation sheet, and then the other piece is a two-sided form that it is, allows them to give community of interest input. There's a place for them to draw a, um, a map of their community, not one of the technical ones, but just like, you know, maybe some streets or different pieces that, um, that it, they would be wanting to put in there. It also reminds them that um, the commission will be looking at their community of interest as being the place that they last resided before incarceration. So uh, it's it's not so much like well where what's the community you're in right now where they would be describing that facility. Um, so that's the statewide adult population. Then they also were provided to uh, the county level jails and through the different sheriff's departments or jail managers. And but there it's not one for everybody. It's more of um, centralized by facility because the setups are so different at each of the counties. And so uh, 
people should be provided with them, but they uh, if they are interested, but they also will be helpful if your loved ones are kind of looking out for them or might even ask, and that would be helpful. Then lastly, they were also sent to the at the county level to through the pro chief probation officers to reach juveniles who are currently in the system um, moving through. And there they had us provide um, they had us provide numbers because sometimes the the youth are not in as long. And so within a week, there might be a turnover of the number of people at a particular facility, a number of the youth. So they have that the outreach that the commission has done has been very broad to try to make sure that as many of these forms can come back so that as many people can be heard from as possible. Thank you. And that's only for the, the statewide process. And like you mentioned, like there's different, you know, there's city, counties, uh, school districts that are all redrawing their own um, boundaries and, and doing the same process. So um, is, does it vary based on each level as far as if they're also including folks who are incarcerated in the per input pr process? Yes, that would vary. I don't have insight that I can share about exactly what's being um, encouraged at any at those levels. I would imagine that it might be different uh, in different counties as well. And if you, you know, I would just encourage you to try to find out the, um, the to engage with that local redistricting process and ask them if you wanted to know. I, I, I know that um, there, uh, you know, we are the largest effort on this just because of the nature of the size of the state. So I would not expect the, that outreach to be as robust just by the nature of the size of um, the counties and the different systems. Awesome. And when was that deadline again, um, when folks need to get their math done? Because especially for folks that have uh, loved ones that are incarcerated, like the mail room is something an issue, sometimes an issue. Um, USPS recently announced that there was going to be an additional time delay as far as like when first class mail goes out. So when is the, the deadline for when these maps need to be submitted or received by? That's a great question. So, so the official answer, um, outside for, for anybody who's on this meeting and any additional groups that are not going through the um, the return process of the paper tool tools is that there isn't a deadline until the final maps have been posted at December 27th but the earlier the input comes back the better now I want to give that caveat as I mentioned the um, the paper, form started to ship on Monday. They started to mail out this Monday and they're going in by groups to the different facilities. And then the facility will receive them, put them out in the mailboxes or put them in the, for the youth, you put them in the meeting rooms where they might be sharing them or possibly with um, counselors or different places in the county facilities. And so they have all been asked, now I wanna, I did not check this date, I wanna, I'm going to try to make sure I'm getting this right. Yes, I think that I am. Um, they they have been asked to return them, I believe, by November 12th, um, so that then in turn they will be boxed and collected together and shipped back to the commissions. Um, uh, let me look. I I actually want to check on that. So before we, we move on, that, I'm thinking that it's actually earlier. It may have been moved up to the 5th so that they're mailed back on the 8th. Let's say that it's the 5th because I know we were trying to get those in before that earlier date. And so that's going to give people, um, depending on when they arrive this week, they have two full weeks plus a little bit, depending on if they're one of the facilities that it arrived earlier. So you want to encourage them to return those to their mail rooms as quickly as possible. And then they're actually going to be coming back by um, United Parcel Service. So um, it'll be returned in a, in a group mailing. Yes, the fifth is the date, so, which is a Friday. Thank you for that, Anne. Um, and if folks have any other questions, like I said, feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself. But um, uh, where else can folks submit uh, questions to Anne? 
So you can submit questions. You, you can send them directly to that to my email address. But if you have a question for the commission, if it's more directed of like, why are you doing this or why is it happening? If it's if it's more of like a public comment or public concern, you can send that right to the voters first act at crc.ca.gov. And um, that's that will get to the commission. It also will make its way back to staff if staff needs it. Uh, particular if it needs to go to a particular staff person as well. Great question, Stacey. Does anybody else have a question? And I am curious, has anybody seen um, any advertising about, uh, particularly about statewide redistricting? It would say, um, I believe it is um, everything's it's all on the lines, I believe is, is what it, it says. It's it's all on the lines and it's got the state of California with a CA. Have any of you seen any of that advertising or heard anything on the radio? I'm seeing a little bit come in on the chat. So those advertisements have started up over the last couple of weeks. You might see them popping up and uh, you, know, you can point them out also to your friends or again, if you wanted to have a presentation like this for one of the groups that you're involved with outside of Initiate Justice, we would be happy to do that as well. I have one more question. And sure. um, so I'm a little bit, I went to a presentation last night for my city um, and they explained the redistricting process at the city level for like city council districts and everything. And they are also encouraging folks to send in their maps and everything. But I ended up inquiring a little further after the presentation and, and got a little more thorough explanation. And they actually shared with me that at least at the city level where I live at, um, they're asking folks that even if it's, if you don't know how to draw like boundaries or you're not really sure where to put those lines, um, if you know, for example, like, well, I think this part of the district needs to stay in this district or, you know, these little clusters should be kept intact uh, in this existing district. Is that something that we are able to do in this process where we say, for example, like, I'll just use my district. I live in Anaheim um, and I want to keep the city of Anaheim in District X where I live in. Um, is that something that folks are able to do if they don't know exactly where to draw the entire like boundaries and can we could just say this should be kept in this district absolutely so that's something that can be done on that on the um, through the draw my ca community tool that it was like the one that's got the least technical of the online tools but you also could do it just by writing to the voters first act at crc.ca.gov or even by um I, I think that you could if you were having trouble but wanted to call you could call the number that is to statewide database to ask for help on the best way to submit that if you really felt stuck. But I think the email would be great and you would say exactly what you wanted to say. It's really important to me that the neighborhood of Z stays a part of this, of one district or that these two neighborhoods should be together and this is why. That's exactly what that community of interest type of feedback is about. And then the commissioners, take all of that in and it helps them to make those decisions. So you do not have to actually draw a district map. You can just provide the words of the description that you want to pass along. Thank you yeah. so much for clarifying that. And that's at that voters first act at crc.ca.gov email address that I dropped in the chat. Yes, that's a great place to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anne. I don't know if there's any other questions. I don't see any in the chat, but Anne, I don't know if you had any uh, last words you wanted to share with folks uh, before we close out uh, tonight's presentation. Well, one of the one of the things that's happening also to try uh, to make sure that the people who are incarcerated around the state know that this is happening and know to look for those paper forms is that uh, a, video has been produced by the commission to help provide some messaging that will be in um, different gathering rooms or for some of the youth, maybe it will be actually presented to them. Um, are, does anybody on the call have a 
have a youth who's currently incarcerated. I'll just watch the chat for that and I'll give a little more detail on that particular thing if there is. Um, and then the so the exciting so one of the things that happened with that is um, initiate justice and um, another group were able to provide their own introduction videos directly to the Department of Corrections to further encourage people who are seeing the official video from the commission to be able to, to participate. So um, it's also possible if you talk to um, one of your loved ones, they might say, oh, I think I saw a video about that, or you could tell them to be on the lookout. And those videos more than likely started playing last week and they'll continue to play this week, next week, once the, as those forms are arriving. So it was just a, a great way to see um, these other organizations who are supporting uh, people who are incarcerated by taking their own independent actions and helping to, to encourage and support that, that people participate. So um, that's really it. The, the commission really wants to hear from as many Californians as possible. And we encourage you to use the email, the visualization feedback forms, anything that you can that that is easy for you and makes it possible for you to do that. So um, thank you all. Thank you for coming and and putting this time in this evening to learn more about redistricting. Thank you so much, Anne.